Great, so we're now back on chapter 2.3 and 2.4. This is on rate problems. And so rates are just like ratios because what? Because they are proportions. They compare one thing to something else. So they still compare. But rates are different because they need units. That means there's a number on the top and there's a number on the bottom that are implied in that number already. So let's just take um, a look that if we do compare two different rates, we have to make sure that their units are the same. So for example, the rate miles per hour, if we're going to compare that, which is speed, this is basically speed or velocity, if we're going to compare that to another speed, but that one's in kilometers per hour, or even meters per second, these are all, these are all concepts or rates of speed, but they're not equal to each other. So if we are going to compare two different rates, then we have to make sure that their units are the same. So if we do do an equivalent, if we do look at equivalent rates, so for example, let's take kilometers per hour. If I have a car that's traveling one, 100 kilometers per hour, this really means 100 kilometers in one hour. So whenever I see a rate that's written like this, I should convert it actually in the in the form of a ratio or a fraction. So then I could find equivalent ratios that will be equivalent to this. So for example, if I use the scale factor times two on, on the top and the bottom, I'll end up with 200 kilometers over two hours. Likewise, if I continue this trend, I would have other numbers like 400 kilometers in four hours. And I could continue finding other equivalent fractions that will be equal to the same. Now let's look at how a rate is built. Normally, the numerator is what we call the dependent variable. It's the thing, or it's the concept, or it's the quantity that we cannot change, or it's the one that responds to something else. So we have less control over it. So in this case, the 100 kilometers. We don't have control over the distance of how far something is. What we do have a little bit of control over is what we find in the denominator. And this is what we call the independent variable. And the independent variable is what we control. We have more control over this one. And whenever we're driving, we technically have more control over how long we drive rather than how far we drive because we decide when we want to stop. We don't necessarily decide how far we're going to go because we can keep going if we have more time. But so normally the time is the independent because we can control it. It's independent. It doesn't need anything else. Whereas the dependent depends on the independent variable. So the dependent variable depends on the, dep uh, the independent variable. So how far we go depends on how long we drive. So normally in the de normally a dependent variable would be something like distance we rarely have control over how far we go sometimes we do another the definite thing we don't always have control over is money so these are examples of dependent variables independent variables are things that we do have control over and the one we no most normally have control over is time how much or how long that something is done, either work or um, a job or traveling, we, we determine how, how long we're going to be traveling for. 
So for the example, one DVD cost $15. If I wanted to change this into a rate, I have control over how many DVDs I buy. So really, the independent variable is on the bottom, one DVD. Whereas what I don't have control over is how much each DVD costs, and that is $15. So the rate in this case is $15 for one DVD. Now, how do we solve rate problems? We basically solve rate problems just like before. When we use equivalent fractions, we can solve them either using scale factors or we use cross multiplication. The golden rule, though, that we have to make sure is that the units stay the same on both sides. So, for example, if for $15 for one DVD, and if I buy six DVDs, how much will that cost? I have to make sure that the DVDs stay in the bottom or in the denominator, and the numerator stays the money. It needs to stay consistent because the rates have to be equivalent, so that means the arrangement has to also be equivalent. So in this case, I can use either scale factors or cross multiplication to find out the answer is $90. Great, so we'll take a look at com a couple of problems in class which are a little bit trickier, uh, but hopefully you understand this and you took all the notes down. So hope you understood this lesson.